Today we are going to learn about motivation theories. This screencast has been prepared under Creative Commons attributions, so it can be shared. And it has been prepared for the FDP of IIT Mumbai. Before we start, I would like to acknowledge the following website that details were taken from these website to create this screencast. The learning objective of today's session is to understand what is motivation, to understand four basic theories of motivation, and to understand motivators. So first, what is motivation? Motivation is a theoretical construct used to explain behavior. It represents the reason for people's action, desires, and needs. Motivation can also be defined as one's direction to behavior or what causes a person to want to repeat a behavioral and vice versa. So what actually forces you to do a particular thing or forces you not to do a thing is a motivator and that is what the motivation is. There are many theories of motivation which try to explain these motivation factors. Let's discuss them one by one. The very first theory is Maslow's need hierarchy theory. According to Maslow, lower need take priority. They must be fulfilled before the others are activated. There are some basic things that take precedence over all else. So if in case you see here, you will find that Maslow's have a need hierarchy, which says that the first need, the need at the bottom should be fulfilled first to go to the second need. So physiological need should be filled, then the safety need, then the need for love and belonging, then the esteem and on the top self-actualization. Lower need should be fulfilled first. If the lower need is fulfilled, then human look for the satisfaction of need at higher level. The most fundamental and basic four layer of the pyramid contain what Maslow called deficiency needs or D needs. Esteem, friendship and love, security and physical needs. If these deficiency needs are not met, with the exception of the most fundamental need, there may not be a physical indication, but the individual will feel anxious and tense. Maslow theory suggests that the most basic level of needs must be met before the individual will strongly desire the secondary or higher level needs. So, the basic need should be fulfilled to reach the next level and the next level is fulfilled after that. Second theory is a cognitive evaluation theory. This theory suggests that there are actually two motivator systems, intrinsic and extrinsic, that corresponds to two kinds of motivators. Intrinsic motivators like achievement, responsibility and competence. Motivators that come from the actual performance of the task or job, the intrinsic interest of the work. On the other hand, extrinsic motivators like pay, promotion, feedback, working conditions, things that come from a person's environment controlled by others. One or the other of these may be more powerful motivator for a given individual. That means it may differ from one person to another. Someone may feel intrinsic, intrinsic motivator more prominent and other may find extrinsic one motivating more. Third is a two-factor theory or the Husberg theory. According to Husberg, two kind of factor affect motivation and they do it in a different ways. First one is a hygiene factor. These are factor whose absence motivates but whose presence has no perceived effect. They are things that when you take them away, people become dissatisfied and act to get them back. Example include decent working condition, security, pay, benefits, etc. So if in case you do not have this, you will be motivated to achieve it. Second is the motivators. These are factors whose presence motivate. Their absence does not cause any particular dissatisfaction. So somewhat opposite of a hygiene factor. It just fails to motivate. 
Example are all things at the top of Maslow hierarchy and the intrinsic motivator what we have seen in the previous slides. So you can see that these are the motivators. Their presence motivates you to perform well. However, if in case it is not present, it does not cause any particular dissatisfaction, but it just fails to motivate. Last theory is equity theory. Equity theory says that it is not the actual reward that motivates, but the perception and the perception is based not on the reward in isolation, but in comparison with the effort that went into getting it and the reward and efforts of others. So equity theory here basically compare one person rewards with the other. It will be more clear with the help of uh, this example. Suppose employee A gets a 20% raise and employee B gets a 10% raise. Will both be motivated as a result? Will A be twice as motivated as B? Will B be, be negatively motivated? Now the question here is that what will be the impact of this raise if A gets a 20% and B gets 10%? On the other hand, if everyone gets a 5% raise, B is likely to feel quite pleased with a raise, even if she work harder than everyone else, because everyone have got the same raise. But if A got an even higher raise, like the first condition, B perceived that she worked just as hard as A and hence she will be unhappy. So she will not be happy because A has got more raise than what she has and she will start believing that she has worked equally hard but has not received the equal raise. And hence, this is what the equity theory says that this will not motivate. That's all for today's session. Thank you very much.